Hello guys, this is Vaish. So now number 11, Thursday, the editorial discussion we'll do. So here, uh, if uh, today you're facing audio issues, uh, please use your headphones. Uh, here some uh, construction work kind of thing is going on around uh, nearby and I cannot avoid it. So please uh, see to it that uh, you are using your headphones in case you are uh, facing any issues. Okay. Anyway, I'll try to avoid it at the maximum. So today's editorial, if you see, uh, again, not very, very important articles. Lot of political articles are there. So I'll tell you what all we'll discuss. First, if you see, investigate the deal. This is about the uh, Rafael uh, deal, okay, which happened. And uh, it's again, uh, nothing, information is nothing here. Only some uh, person, uh, some Gupta, okay, Sushen Gupta, someone, his name has come like he was in a middleman and he got some $7 million, something money he got uh, during Congress time. And so it has to be investigated by CB, uh, CBI. That kind of thing they are telling, okay, they are telling CBI already has proof, uh, then why the investigation did not progress. So that uh, one point they are discussing, okay, nothing else is there. Again, if you see here, demonetization, it's not anything technical or anything. It's just a political kind of article where they're telling uh, the BJP brought in demonetization and complete, uh, it has failed. Okay. Why this article? Because uh, now five years has completed. Okay. You know, November 8, uh, the uh, 2016, the demonetization happened and now uh, five years completed. So this author is telling like uh, none of the agenda, which was uh, planned or the uh, reasons for which demonetization was done, nothing uh, came into uh, success uh, nature, everything was a failure. So in every paragraph he is telling that only failed, 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 okay, nothing else is there. So you know what is demonetization obviously, so there is no takeaway from here, only thing is telling is complete failure, okay. Then here again, if you see, this is China's complete China's article, so we don't need it. Here they're telling the growth of Communist Party, their agenda, how they work there, exploiting the labors, dictator kind of rule. Then one word, if you see here, this common prosperity discourse. So if you please ask like common prosperity discourse was in news related to what? It is China. Okay. Because uh, China, what they do is, like here in India, we have this uh, too much startup related initiative and unicorn companies are coming and many, many people are thriving and uh, they're, uh, what is it, going into great heights. But there in China, unwanted taxes are put, unwanted exploitations done on low level labors and uh, nobody is allowed to grow high. Okay. Whoever is growing also, from their money is taken by looting them or giving them a lot of taxes and uh, no subsidies, nothing is given. Okay. So all their money is again taken and given to other people and telling like, okay, this is how we uh, maintain common prosperity. Okay. Meaning nobody is happy there. So again, it's a China related article, not important. So three articles in the first page itself, you see, it's not worth for a UPSG level exam. Okay. For your language sake, you can read it just to know the stories and all. Then here, this one we'll discuss death by hospital fire. Okay. Hospital fires have been ha happening and this is a impact of the COVID cases increasing. So how is that connection that we'll see? So this one article we'll see. Okay. GS1, uh, it is important. Okay. The vulnerable section all getting uh, impacted. Okay. And GS1 or 2. Okay. Then here, if you see, uh, does India have a right to burn for fossil fuel? This we'll discuss. Okay. Because this is what uh, we always discuss. Like we did not emit a lot of carbon in the industrial revolution time, but now we are being forced to reduce the carbon emissions so that kind of things are there so that we'll discuss okay because india has now huge huge uh, commitments the panchamrita and all so that we'll discuss then here again this is about uh, the new movie which came uh, jay beam you know that slogan jay beam is a movie which is a very brilliant movie and everybody should watch it whichever part of india you are you should watch that so about that uh, quickly we'll discuss what they are telling because the slogan has become popular so who gave that slogan in reality and ambedkar's vision and all those things is mentioned so this we'll discuss so two articles from the uh, second page and one article from the first page and here if you see this table also i'll quickly show you this is a Europe uh, COVID cases are suddenly increasing okay in a huge number they are increasing so that table we'll see and here the triumph of the turn code is a, a state level thing Telangana but here the anti-defection law is mentioned so what is anti-defection law in a quick one picture slide I'll show you okay so second page is more important today if you see one two three four things are there which is little important but in the first page only the uh, this is important okay so now this all things if you need for free okay every day because already 10th day this is you have to support us okay so first I'll show the table before showing you more uh, other playlist and all. Europe is back as COVID-19 epicenter. Okay, 55 percentage rise in COVID cases in the last uh, uh, four weeks, you can tell. Okay, in the last four weeks, in one month, this much cases have increased and most of them are Delta variant also. There are even this thing like Delta came out from India. Okay, Delta and Kappa variant, okay, KAPPA. Delta and Kappa came from Indian origin. So that is also a concern. So Indians also do not open the gates. If you see two days before I discussed an article where Singapore opened everything and Singapore also suddenly huge number of Delta cases came here also. And this, uh, I think the vaccination will not work against Delta also because most of the people in Europe are already vaccinated both the doses still they are getting the, this thing so that is why it is very very uh, dangerous so please use your mask please don't step out for your enjoyment and all you can go but please take the uh, safety measures 
sanitizer always with you don't touch anywhere even if you touch anywhere don't touch your face with that so if you don't do that again a big big pandemic wave is going to come back and this corona is never going to end okay so here again they are telling different different charts of uh, different continent wise if you see europe asia and all so europe suddenly huge surges and all you can see okay even in africa there is huge surges so number of this numbers and all not important for you but you should understand that rising cases are there in the last 7 days and uh, here also if you see in within the europe okay within the europe which countries are getting affected if you see germany uh, russia uk everywhere huge cases are there okay so this and all will obviously come and spread here also because people are now started traveling here and there everything is getting opened because covid shield go vaccine vaccinations are also accepted in these countries so people take vaccine and go there so when they come back they are going to bring back all these things okay and again you will see again different trend of visitors okay different different visitors coming from here and there that trend also they have shown so if you see again delta surge okay delta variant is the one which is causing the issue so we have to be very very careful okay so these numbers again not very important but if you want for statistics take you can go and take the screenshot and uh, read or make a notes okay for later adding into your main senses so this is the uh, overall table of europe cases increasing now as i told if you cannot support us then we will have to think to move it to paid classes or maybe shut down some of the playlist okay because everyone cannot work for free okay every faculty are working from different parts of this country for you so please see to it that you support us okay even the subscriber count at vice courses is not increasing so if you need these uh, free videos okay you have to support us already many many things i have kept on hold so unless you don't support all these things will stop okay the viewership i'm seeing like it's like 10 views 20 views 30 views just for 20 30 people we cannot work day and night okay because you don't know the effort you you can try yourself try making a lecture of this quality what we make okay where slides are there data is there it has a lot of things that's all english hindi these are like direct direct from the textbook also and based on upsc exam we are putting in more and more content for you so if you cannot uh, support us okay then uh, these people will have to work on something else productive which will have benefit for them also okay even economics and all this one of the most brilliant lectures you can see in on the internet okay you go and watch that lectures you will understand everything from economics from the basics okay what is money what is banking what is gdp what is inflation everything step by step we are teaching you so if you do this alone you won't need any other coaching so please see to that you like and comment under the video because some people won't like even if you like you don't comment okay you simply put a comment there so that the teacher feels like okay these many people are depending on me i can do i will do one more episode for you okay so please support these uh, mains lectures and all it's like because mains test series is anyway available whoever is a very serious aspirant can enroll and learn everything from us so others who are simply looking for freebies at least the least thing you can do is give a like and comment okay so again this is the uh, email id and uh, whatsapp from which you can contact me and ask any queries even for test series you can contact me there and other queries please read it so the hospital fires uh, article not a very big article just uh, uh, two paragraphs so if you see here this statement is very good no great betrayal than uh, when what people believe to be safe heavens turn into killing field okay you go into hospital hoping that you are getting cured and you are getting uh, better like safe heaven but you are dying from there out of fire means there is no other greater betrayal than this okay so in the last couple of years it has increased rapidly many uh, like four infants died on monday in this uh, bopal hospital then in ahmednagar maharashtra some 11 patients died then in march uh, 10 people died in sunrise hospital mumbai so all these things are happening even death of over 120 people most of them are covid 19 patients okay so there are major fires also there are minor fires also so minor fire means you are causing property to uh, damage or this uh, anxiety for patients or their loved ones they are getting feared what will happen if major fire comes and major fire means people are actually dying okay even the hospital staff are dying so these are all very very uh, what is a unfortunate incident already the nation and the full world is suffering in between if fires also come it is going to be big problem so the link between this uh, rising uh, fires and the burden of covid 19 okay it is because of like kind of man made only okay if you see here the rising cases okay when the first and second wave is true okay we all know that but the uh, capacity of the hospital has not improved okay the infrastructure expansion has not happened what is what is people doing people are arranging bed and mattresses some from somewhere and on the floor and here and there you are somehow accommodating the patients that is good and that is fine okay as of now temporarily and oxygen cylinders are being arranged pp kits are being arranged all these things are there but the power lines the power lines nothing is done okay the transformers extra transformers are not put power units are not there so the entire load is on the existing same transformer which were never designed to handle this much power uh, consumption okay like earlier we did not have to have the ventilators on 24/7 we did not have to have the air air condition 24/7 
ओके बट नाउ ओके इफ यू सी आफ्टर द कोविड ओनली दिस हैपन सो आफ्टर द कोविड एंड दिस हैपन द पावर यूनिट्स द पावर लाइन्स आर नॉट एबल टू हैंडल दिस सो दैट इज वाई इलेक्ट्रिकल शॉर्ट सर्क्यूट्स आर हैपनिंग एंड देर आर ऑल्सो फ्लेमेबल सब्सटेंस यू नो दिस सैनिटाइजर इज ऑल्सो हैविंग एल्कोहल कंटेंट सो ओवरऑल दिस इज गोइंग टू बर्न अप इट्स गोइंग टू द स्मॉल स्पार्क कैन गो इन टू फुल स्केल फायर्स ओके एंड हॉस्पिटल्स यू कैनॉट लाइक सडनली टेक इन पीपल एंड रन ओके दे आर गोइंग टू डाई सो वॉट द ऑथर एंड एवरीबडी आर रिकमेंडिंग इज दैट यू शुड डू फायर सेफ्टी ऑडिट यू शुड वर्क ऑन that also and along with fire safety audit electrical audit should be there the wiring the capacity the load it can handle all those things should be there okay because else this healing zone which is believed to be healing zone will not be healing zone and it will be going to be a, a death field kind of thing okay so this is the message which author is trying to tell so this kind of two three points is like very good points so that is why i thought uh, we'll give you okay whenever you have to tell about hospital infrastructure or designing anything any anything which is in gs3 and all this kind of question will come you can use these points okay article 2 is about the coal usage okay the worldwide coal usage so for prelims two pictures i'll show you one is the different type of coal we already have a revision chart my students will get it so peat lignite bituminous and anthracite okay anthracite is the very lowest quantity in india i think in jammu and kashmir you will find it bituminous will be the maximum it will be there everywhere in uh, east india and all then lignite in around tamil nadu region you will get peat is there in the uh, mangrove regions and swamp region you will get it so this kind of coal is there so two uh, directions if you see increasing moisture content left wise and increasing heat and carbon content right side meaning the right side is the most efficient one okay this anthracite is the most efficient one then bituminous then lignite and then peat so some features are given just pause it and read it just for your prelim sake again whoever is enrolled don't worry i'll give you detailed revision charts detailed mcqs everything will be covered in our uh, this thing okay test series and then again if you see biogas is one thing which is now uh, like for the replacement of coal and all people are suggesting so what is the component of biogas because now if you see this year onwards or last year onwards prelims questions are very very technical very very like general science kind of questions they are asking what is the component of this what is there in lipstick what is there in maggi what is there in uh, each of the thing okay like pressure cooker how it works so this kind of even though it is very very technical you have to by heart them okay no other option for you so just this table try to uh, by heart it and see like what is containing in that okay methane carbon dioxide because they will ask like that only like uh, ammonia is totally absent in biogas or uh, methane is at the lowest quantity in biogas all these things will be wrong statements so you have to know this so that's why i put for prelim sake this one okay there is nothing there in the article about this but i'm just giving you now cop 26 we already discussed panchamrita and all these things so P pm modi's five big goals for india okay so that is uh, very very important for you uh, prelims and uh, even mains you can list it down so achieving net zero by 2070 okay net zero means it's not like zero emission how much ever emission you do opposite to that also will be there meaning the carbon sink also will be there okay you emit this much but you consume also this much you capture also this much so like that net net you will do zero by 2070 okay even though the developed countries were trying to force india to do it by 2030 2050 and all we told we have historical problems not like you where you emitted lot of things we are in the developing phase now we want to get developed so there will be coal emissions so up to 2070 we will do that okay then also it's a very difficult task okay then reducing total projected carbon emissions by 1 billion tons starting now till 2030 okay 1 billion tons okay then increasing renewable energy component to 50 percentage of total energy requirement okay meaning 50 percent you will do renewable and 50 percent you will do non renewable then reducing the carbon intensity by 45 percentage okay carbon intensity by 45 percentage now increasing non fossil energy capacity to reach 500 gigawatt earlier it was 450 gigawatt okay it was 100 gigawatt modi increased to 450 gigawatt now we are increasing it to 500 gigawatt so these are all very very ambitious and like a example set by a country like india and every like every country is respecting we indians are ones who don't realize the importance of all these things uh, but the foreigners and the other prime ministers the british prime minister everybody has appreciated what india is taking stance okay these are very very ambitious and even the biggest of biggest countries are not able to achieve it okay but india is setting up these goals so it will be a example and others will also hopefully follow okay and the world will be a better place so now in this article okay it is a debate on uh, india's uh, coal dependency okay we have lot of coal dependency so when putting this much big big targets are we going to do it okay are we going to achieve it because there are people who are justifying it one will be the coal lobby okay coal people who are the company running and people they will obviously tell like okay we need coal that is the personal interest okay the business interest but there are other progressive people also trying to justify it okay so that is where the problem is others at least who are educated who, they should understand right so that is what they are discussing in this article so net zero by 2070 and we have to see whether we will walk the talk okay meaning what we talk to what we preach will we actually implement it that we have to wait and see that is what the author is trying to tell so two three points are there very important points so here if you see india needs to develop we obviously know india needs to develop and development requires energy okay there is no compromise on that and india has neither historically emitted nor currently emits carbon anywhere close to what 
the global north has done okay the uk and that is all the global north okay uk russia these were the people who are developing at that time so uh, even usa so they were developing they were emitting lot of things so we have nowhere near emitted to what they had done okay but that you cannot uh, uh, go and argue okay like if you see here you can ask for a fairer share in uh, carbon budget like okay in the full 100 percentage budget you should only emit this much we should emit more because we have the rights but that right to burn is a wrong way of justifying your this thing okay it's like arguing that since india was colonized it has the right to do the same okay like you are telling like okay you burnt this much carbon we will also burn this much carbon so will you tell like uh, you colonized us for 200 years we will also come and colonize you for 200 years so that way you cannot justify okay just injustice is there it is true we did not do but you cannot give such an argument instead you should set an example and try to go go towards the green energy instead of going and fighting for more carbon budget share okay even though it is justified okay we should need it but you cannot do that because the world is moving towards a uh, negative side okay so again do the countries in the global south okay like india or south africa or australia okay australia is also in developed category india or south africa or brazil these people should they increase the global carbon budget okay for development we are telling right we need energy but it is not mandatory answer is thankfully no okay because there are now renewable energy uh, technology and all these things are there so different different points we'll see okay question of development one there is no doubt that economic development requires energy but that does not translate into energy by burning coal Okay, now what is the argument which people usually tell? Why we need coal? Everyone tells right, we need coal, we need coal. They are telling because of the cost, because of the reliability, because of the domestic availability. This is what they are telling, coal is more better. Okay, but each point this author is telling properly here, if you see, cost if you see, renewable energy cost also has come down very sharply. If it's solar energy, hydro energy, wind energy, it has come very down. Then how can you tell like coal is very cheap and these are not cheap? This also has come down in the last one decade because of the lot of efforts being done. This is also cheap. So cost factor is now gone. Okay, you cannot tell cost is the reason you are taking coal. Now reliability. Renewable energy has already managed and with improved, improved technological process, new semiconductors, new solar panels, all these things we have seen like the solar, uh, the reliability of this is also very good. Okay, they are able to light up an entire village or light up an entire uh, city. It is possible with that also. So reliability also, you cannot tell coal is the only thing. So reliability factor also gone. Now domestic availability. This is actually a myth because coal import has always increased. Okay, from 782.6 billion in uh, 2011, it has increased to 1155 billion. That means we are a largest import of one of the largest importer of the coal in the world okay so then how can you sell there is domestic availability and that is why we are using coal so all three myths all three points are gone okay so this is an excellent point you can use in your exam where you can justify that coal is not required okay you basically ask that only like coal is no longer the future or coal not be uh, need not be required justify so this is the exact three way the dimensions which you give right for that only UPC gives you mark simply if you tell a one liner like uh, renewable energy is better that is not enough you have to tell like this cost reliability domestic domestic availability and then prove each with a logical example or statistic fact okay this is how you earn marks now second point why should the global south be aping the north in the development model it wants to follow okay you know we countries the south countries and all uh, are called third world countries okay even if it's african countries india we are called third world countries or the uh, uh, new countries so if you see here the technology and choices okay always it is like when we do a uh, north south collaboration okay north and south if we do a tie up what will happen is the technology will be with them Okay, the technology, if you see the former controls technology and the latter merely provides inputs. We are just like a raw material provider or a labor provider and service provider, but the full technology and the rights and patent, everything is with them. Okay, when it is north-south. So why do that? Instead, you can do south-south collaboration. Okay, south-south people uh, have now access to a little bit of technology. You have all the renewable resources because you are tropical countries. You have solar energy, you have wind energy, everything you have. So do south-south collaboration instead of north-south collaboration. That is one point you are telling. Okay, so the two problems which we had one was control over technology and one was this uh, labor issue okay the surplus of labor which we have and they are not getting jobs these two issues we couldn't uh, satisfy in the past okay but now we can try to do it okay at least partially employment can be given they are telling like uh, go and uh, give the renewable energy power and all for villages and poor people and all like we have our mandrega scheme and all they themselves are developing their villages okay cleaning up the villages digging pits digging wells so like that go and do there so what will happen is the issue of employment issue of technology issue of energy poverty self-reliance everything will get solved simultaneously okay if you try to implement it in with the south south collaboration in all your grassroots levels okay so this is the point number two now point number three they are telling 
that global injustice only okay the carbon budget which people tell like okay you did this much carbon emission now we will do this much uh, thing so give us more budget carbon budget means more uh, uh, chance more like 30 percent or 50 percent we'll do in the total budget so that is a problem that if you see this injustice is not just in the nation state alone okay you, you are comparing india and usa india and uk but within the rich and with india itself like rich will be emitting more industry will be emitting more poor will not be emitting uh, more so that in injustice is there not only among nations it is there between the indian country itself with between rich and poor it is between humans and non-human also like animals and humans cannot fight with each other like you are emitting more i am emitting more so it is there at all levels so you cannot fight with this okay then one important or interesting thing is this double whammy of injustice for the global south okay so this double whammy what are this double problem they are telling they are not first thing is we are not only not primarily responsible okay we did not emit this much carbon and cause all these problems okay that is one thing but on the other end when if if at all all now this happens global warming and all these thing happens who is going to suffer okay the effect of climate change is first going to be seen in the south only because south is mostly in the oceans mostly in the islands if you see northern hemisphere you don't have that much oceans uh, empty empty oceans okay islands are lesser okay but in south there are a lot of islands and all these things where uh, when the climate change problem comes to the peak they are going to the islands are going to go down first okay so that is why they call double whammy of injustice okay we did not do it also but we are going to suffer more okay so this is the uh, third point which the author is telling okay so mitigation from the south alone will not make the differences required to stop this catastrophe but burning more coal will not necessarily solve the problem also okay so simply going and asking carbon budget will not solve your problem okay so now none of these three points we discussed but none of these will uh, do justice to you like the wrongs of the past cannot be righted okay it cannot be corrected okay the global north has to pay for it that is there but what you have to do is instead of fighting for all these things you have to tell or create conditions okay meaning such an example like india is doing india is setting this much example that britishers and us and all are watching this and they feel like okay we did all the mistakes and they are correcting it for us so we should go and support them okay so we should go and give them funding we should go and give them money we should go and give them technology so that way you have to create conditions in such a way that they will come and help us okay so that is exactly what south africa did south africa at glasgow that it cop 26 went and told okay you should have that you should set that moral high ground okay you did all the mistakes and we are correcting your mistakes so then automatically they'll come and help us this is what the author is also suggesting okay now there is a deadlock happening like because of the other thing which i told okay north is justifying that operating uh, coal mines in the south okay south is doing all the coal mines now and that is why it is emitting more that is north is telling and south is telling like we need a higher share in carbon budget so this if you keep fighting with each other it will create a deadlock and nothing will happen so you have to set an example and north against the south thing you have to go away and you have to do south south collaboration come together set an example create conditions and then make everyone come to a proper way so that the wrongs of the past and all will be forgotten and we will make a better world in the future okay so i've tried to explain the points very like important important points is bolded and red colored so it, it should be clear by now okay make notes and whenever a question comes on this, this is the maximum you have to write and you will get full marks. Okay. Anti-defection, that article, that article I am not going to discuss, it's a political article. But what is anti-defection for prelim sake, you should know. Okay, in 1985 we know okay first we had how many schedules we had only eight schedules in our constitution okay then in uh, 1951 after the constitution came into effect the first amendment was done okay and then the uh, ninth schedule came okay that's a different topic we are not discussing here but after that the second amendment uh, when did it come it came in uh, sorry the 52nd amendment put the 10th schedule okay in 1985 52nd amendment came and the 10th schedule was inserted which is dealing with the anti-defection law okay meaning you are disqualifying an mp or mla you are disqualifying so there are different grounds to it okay like if the person okay suppose you are in a part of a party and you don't listen to them you vote against them or you don't come for voting abstain from voting you don't follow the directions given by the party then you can be disqualified this is one one way okay or if there is a merger okay you merge okay like uh, parties some people break away and go somewhere so that kind of thing is there then um, uh, if you take uh, the nominated mp okay there is something called nominated mp there is indi independent mp okay mp or mla so if a independent mp go and join a party after getting elected that is also defection okay you cannot join like that nominated person after six months if you go and join somewhere that is also defection okay so like that there are cases in your polity textbook lakshmikanth it's all given clearly in our polity lectures also we are taking test series also we are taking so i am telling you you have to go and revise this because it has in come in news okay anti-defection law is in news so for prelim sake you have to work more but in editorial nothing of this sort is given okay they are just discussing the politics there and again uh, who is the final word okay the uh, chairman okay the uh, presiding officer presiding officer that is who speaker in Lok Sabha or the chairman in Dal Sabha this is the final authority 
on any decision okay relating to this so that even the uh, supreme court has told it is true okay there is no there is no problem in constitutional validity and all constitution also sorry supreme court also agrees that so speaker or the chairman is the last word when it comes to the deciding who has to be disqualified okay and there is a different court case also in 1992 there is this uh, i forgot the name of the case there is a case okay in that case it was told like all this is there but judicial review also will be there okay when somebody is defected supreme court has every right to go and do a judicial review and check whether it was actually correct the defection was actually correct or wrong okay then there is this merger which is an exception also like suppose uh, two third members of the party okay actually initially it was one third okay that in, they then uh, 2003 made an amendment and told two third two third of the people break from the party and go away for a merger for something then that is not considered defection okay because that is allowed that is an exception given here okay one more exception is there which i'll tell you suppose a person becomes a speaker okay an mp is becoming a speaker or a chairman then he can resign the party okay if you resign the party then it is not amounting to uh, defection okay else normally if you simply voluntarily resign from the party then it's like disqualification and defection but if you are resigning just because you got a speaker post or chairman post it's an exception you will not be uh, like anti defected okay it's not like a defected okay so this very basic polity things you have to go and revise that is the point here i have not explained everything here but like this pointers if you learn related to the editorial which comes you can be sure that prelims question when it comes you will not be shocked you will not be surprised like why did upsc ask defection all of a sudden they are asking because it is in news okay now the last article the jb movie okay this movie if you have not watched i recommend you strictly to go and watch because there are many many movies which if you watch it solves most of your questions okay whether it's in prelims or mains you get lot of points okay in history classes also i told you many many movies so this one is available in hindi also telugu also malayalam also tamil also all languages it is dubbed and put in amazon prime please go and watch it okay i have seen it that's why i'm telling it's a brilliant movie one of the best movies i have i can tell in the last many years it has come in uh, entire india okay so this if you see uh, you know ambedkar Uh, is always considered as a dalit icon always in sc people's house and everybody even uh, ambedkar photo will be there and everybody are following it so he was a legend kind of person he, he even constitution he only wrote so now here the j beam it's actually not just a movie name it is actually a slogan which was there by babu hardas okay because slogan is always important upsc will ask like inkilab zindabad who gave or that thing who gave or like uh, uh, kisan jawan that one who gave so you should know all these things if you know like popular slogans tell in comment section so that others can learn like this slogan was given by this person this slogan this person because it is nowadays coming okay earlier it was ssc question now in upsc also this is coming so you have to know okay so this one they are telling like now this even though it started like for dalit community and sc community it is emerging as a political slogan okay it is inspiring various various marginal communities towards social and political action so everybody are now using this uh, as a salutation or a common uh, slogan okay jay beam so here in the movie you should know one thing about the prelims which already ups has irular tribe irular tribe of tamil nadu is already a prelims question okay and this movie is also dealing with them only the poor and illiterate people illiterate people they are sometimes uh, uh, what to say caught for some false complaint okay like something some theft happened something happened they will be caught and they are hit and like made to confess that they are the ones who did it okay the police torture them okay simply to appease the elite people or to avoid something to uh, cover up something these are the people who are who are living in the like what to say small small huts and forest area and all they are caught and they do nothing they do this all the uh, small small work in the cleaning work and the catching the snakes these are the works they do in the community okay and these people are always tortured so in this movie a very brilliant way they have shown okay a wife of it's actually a true incident okay it's a true story so uh, even a, a, a wakil was there a person was there who was uh, uh, whose name was justice chandru okay now so he has fought lot of cases hundreds of cases in those days and protected lot of people community people uh, this community people vulnerable community and given them justice okay so this uh, actor surya who produced the film also he has done a brilliant job in showing it and here they are showing a mix of the character okay the character of surya as a mix of a person who is in uh, ambedkar's uh, ideology and also karl marx ideology or lenin ideology communism okay so that they are explaining here in this article so the full if article if you fully read you will get the full story so i am not reading the full article but the idea is this only if you see here red shawl flag statue of lenin communism okay but you should know that ambedkar and marx is not like they had same ideology okay ambedkar had opposed many things which uh, karl marx also told because karl marx did not uh, tell about the uh, political rights of poor people and all he just told about the economic rights like everybody he should get job every should good salary same salary kind of thing okay that equality he told but the political equality uh, karl marx did not tell so if upsc put a statement like uh, ambedkar because recently a question came like gandhi and karl marx agreed upon what point so same like that they will ask like uh, uh, ambedkar and uh, marx agreed on what point okay 
and also you should see earlier this leftist leadership and all never cared about ambedkar's political ideas okay but recently the local left activist in tamil nadu maharashtra andhra and all they are engaging more with dalits and working on their problems and they are also accepting the anti caste leaders like jyotiba phule uh, periyar ambedkar all these are prelims questions okay about everyone question has come already so now this and all because in news okay upsc will ask any kind of question about these people okay mains also it can come in gs1 gs2 gs3 and all question can come on this so again they are telling in this overall thing in this movie is that the police and judiciary failed to safeguard the right of the irular okay so in this movie even though they support as a sort of leftist they didn't uh, popularize this uh, populist leftist styles okay like they do this mass worker strike and mass mobilization and on the road candle march nothing like that okay they are actually showing through a legal uh, thing okay legal uh, thing anti establishment preaching they are doing okay through a court case they are doing it's not like simply burning the street and all these things which leftist uh, usually do okay so that if you see chandru does not have a the chandru means the judge or the character does not have a savior complex instead he emerges as a ambedkarite hero who struggles to protect the life and dignity of the tribal people by adopting democratic and le legal routes okay all these things are being used and then so it will inspire this uh, title of the film jay beam it is assuming meaning and it inspires diverse marginal groups to also stake claims in modern institutional mechanism that have been governed so far by the caste elites okay all these things if you know the poor people don't have rights they get, getting access to justice is a very big, big thing for them so that now this will inspire many people okay and so it is moving beyond caste or regional ghettos and mobilizing marginalized communities the youth and the intellectuals to bring out transformative change in social and class relationship so this is the gist of what the author is trying to tell so my recommendation is you have to go and watch this movie so that whatever i explained you will see in visual format and it will give you inspiration to write out a very uh, brilliant answer on uh, caste problem or this uh, lower uh, uh, marginal communities problems okay it's a brilliant movie okay this is the original person okay so uh, he's done a br brilliant job and this uh, movie has uh, even given 10000 times uh, justice to the actual incident okay so please uh, watch this movie this is the end of this editorial session okay so please uh, whatsapp me if you are new to this channel because many people still keep uh, commenting like sir how to contact you and all already in every video i am telling so please contact me i'll help you out okay so thank you and have a nice day